All right, everyone, it's time for the occult video 196, Spirit Attraction and Pseudo-Possession. Now, by spirit attraction, I don't mean like attraction to spirits. I mean spirits or energies being attracted to people. The idea of leeching, uh, uh, that a spirit, a ghost or whatever, can latch onto a person or an object. I've already spoken of that concept. The idea that a spirit or a demon or whatever can be associated with an object, a place, this is how ghosts are most often seen. It's like the person died here, they're still here. That, that spirit that is incorporeal but, you know, intelligent, at least according to some, or it's, you know, energetic, it is physically associated with a certain location. In some cases, that can be a person. The person can be the sort of spirit vessel. In my own practice, in my own belief, I am skeptical of this. Uh, I don't believe that, that if, if you're looking at the spirit as a physical thing, if you're looking at it as not 100% intangible, like it's an energy, it's on some other dimension, you can't readily see it or something. I suppose that you could accept the concept, uh, I believe, for instance, in, in ghosts, I don't believe they're intelligent. I believe it's basically a feedback that plays itself out over time. It's a remnant energy, it's associated with a place because of psychological stress. It, it tugged on the string of the fourth dimension or some weird shit like that. I don't pretend to fully understand it, but having seen something like that before, vouching for it in an, as an anecdote and seeing you know, something so weird, I think that it's an energy. It just happens to occasionally sporadically be able to be sensed. That being said though, how could it attach to a, a person, that person being constantly in motion, uh, being being energetically changed even by just weather and you know, fucking everything else. A little bit different than some forsaken castle, very stagnant, unchanging over time. Uh, or a cave, or, or even just a regular building. Uh, there's a, a homeostasis maintained there that the person, or a smaller object in transit constantly, would be able to actually display. So the physical uh, side of it, I'd say, more skeptical. If you're looking at it as spirits, as in entities that are more intelligent, yeah, you'd have to accept that more. Why wouldn't it? A spirit would definitely be able to choose, therefore, if it had any volition. It would be able to choose to be associated with a person. It could be for, for good or bad reasons. As in my last video, uh, in, in ancient lore, Christian lore and Jewish especially, but also in, in some pagan elements as well, uh, pre-Christian in nature. Uh, you're looking at the concept that spirits can be attracted to people. They, they can't help it, uh, like the concept of the incubus or the succubus. In some traditions, they're seen as simply, they're voracious, they're fallen. Uh, they are sexually insatiable. They can't actually do anything sexual, but they desire it. They're attracted to the life force or the generative essence of mankind. That's what, you know, explains, you know, orgasming in your sleep because you had a wet dream or something, basically. That's what they thought. It's a way of explaining a physical phenomenon, a medical phenomenon that's very much real. Uh, but that's the way it was seen. It was seen as these, these spirits are attracted to the human force in some way, or to animals. You have the story of Jesus casting out demons in the Bible, uh, you know, legion, and they enter a, a herd of pigs. The pigs go crazy and throw themselves off a cliff. It's not entirely clear exactly why. Uh, but they decided that they wanted to have hosts, and so they go into this herd and drive it insane after, you know, dwelling in one specific man for a long time so that he's living in a graveyard and carrying chains around, making hideous noises, and he's like fucking diseased and can't even eat or sleep. You have these stories where spirits are attracted to people. In the sense of spirit attraction, generally though, you're looking at, at lesser malevolence like mischief, mere mischief, or, or the insatiable nature of some, uh, some dr uh, dryad or nymph or something, in, again, in some traditions, or you're looking at benevolence. You're looking at like, oh, well, I know my ancestors are watching over me. The idea that the, that the ancestors in spirit form can do that be uh, you know, attracted to a family, a person, a place, they're guarding it, they're helping it, they're doing their best, they appear in dreams, give them inspiration, literally a daimon. That was quite common in paganism too. Uh, insofar as that essence goes, I do believe, for example, that remnant energy that's ancestral can be in play. Again, I don't give it full volition though. I don't believe that when you die, you, you can be left behind, so to speak. I believe in reincarnation. But something can be left behind, because you got to remember, the energy is physical, it's retained. The mental state, uh, it's based on a very physical brain, that's physical, it's, it's not going to be reincarnated. 
No, you will not retain your memories after reincarnating. This past life regression bullshit always leads to people saying, well, I was Napoleon, and then I was Mussolini, and then I was like a war hero, and now I'm here. I'm a great person, in other words. Somehow, every person has been famous qu quite often, much more than the background level you would expect. No one ever says, oh yeah, I was a slave. Hey, and before that, I was a servant. And before that, I died a pauper. And before that, I was a beggar. Before that, I was some dude on a battlefield. I got shot and my head got blown off. Nobody ever re relates all of the boring lives they would have had to have lived. Also, you're not counting the times you would have been an animal, <laughs> maybe, or something, if it's possible. Or an alien. You know, if there's life out there, why couldn't you reincarnate as, as Zlorg from the planet Xyloth or something? Of course you could. Uh, when we're talking about spirit attraction, I'm talking about energy more than anything else. Uh, it's it's kind of tangible after a fashion, but I, I relegate it to the multi-dimensional sort of framework that I think existence has. So what you're seeing is a temporary crossing over of some other reality into ours. Or you're seeing remnant energy that's still sort of there on a higher dimension, of a vibration, a frequency, a wavelength. Not to get new agey on you, but that's very much scientifically possible. We've got people totally secular, they're atheists, they're talking about the possibility of the universe being an illusion that's generated by a computer, and we're literally like, like uh, whether or not uh, you, you have an aspect of uh, what that, whatever it's called there. What's that principle? That only you uh, truly exist? It's, uh, I can't remember the philosophical name for it right off the top of my head. The idea that no one else is really real. The NPC idea, really. I can't recall it at the time. But the idea that either all of us or just you yourself plugged into a computer, you're in a pod somewhere on an alien spaceship, probably on a long journey, and you're like, well, this is going to be boring. I'll plug myself into an AI system for a while, you know, for the next million years while I go to planet Xyloth. Uh, it's possible, and it's spoken of uh, in, in terms of possibility by a great number of people, increasing skeptical uh, individuals, uh, very much secular. Some of these people don't believe in any spiritual forces. They're trying to relegate it to the scientific, the matrix theory, basically. Yeah, maybe. If that's the case, why couldn't there be all sorts of weird phenomena? Everything would be possible. You're in, a, you're in an AI system. It's obviously governed by physical laws that have been chosen by some entity. Why can't they randomly change? Like someone accidentally drops their coffee on the wrong button. Whoops! Oh shit, that's going to be one weird dream they're having for the next 10,000 years. It could be very strange indeed. Maybe that's what happens when you die. That's about all. Peace out.